four days of closure following last week's devastating terrorist attack on downtown Manhattan Wall Street. The, the NASDAQ, uh, as Greg Clarkin said, not fitting into the top 10 in either percentage or point terms. However, that is not the case for the Dow. Uh, this the largest point decline ever for the Dow Jones Industrials. But again, in percentage terms, it appears that the uh, these uh, in percentage terms, this decline today, as large as it is in point terms, did not hit the top uh, 10 uh, point declines ever on percentage terms again for the Dow Jones Industrials. Uh, let's go back to Rhonda Schaffler. Rhonda, as you said, orderly trading, nonetheless, a significant decline. Uh, the sectors there hardest hit today, uh, uh, airlines, of course, uh, uh, what else? Well, let's start first with a couple of the big losers on the Dow because this was a brutal day of selling. We want to show you what was responsible for much of the Dow's losses. It did include some of the cyclical names as well as financial stocks on the Dow, American Express, Boeing, Citigroup, General Electric, General Motors, among those stocks getting very hard. The airlines, on a percentage basis, were the worst performers. That was not surprising when we consider the news we've heard from airlines over the weekend. The Dow transportation average sliding better than 400 points. There is the damage for the airline stocks, Continental, Delta, UAL, and Southwest, all sharply lower. Southwest faring a little bit better on a percentage basis. Also, the insurance stocks. We're among those hit very hard. All states, American International, Chubb, Cigna, and MetLife with losses. But, Lou, there was buying here. It was both defensive in nature and defense stocks. And that's what we're going to take a look at now. That would include companies like General Dynamics, Northrop Grumman, Raytheon, Level 3, and Lockheed Martin. They were among some of the winners here. This was, Lou, the busiest trading day in the history of the New York Stock Exchange. You pointed out the damage with the Dow in terms of points, but this was a day where traders spent a lot of time reaching out to each other, hugging each other, just happy to see each other. Again, it was not the best of days in the markets, but for these traders here, just three blocks away from ground zero, it was a day where they could at least feel comforted with each other. Lou? Rhonda, as you say, a day of, uh, of heightened and uh, mixed emotion there. Those, uh, those traders, those four traders and specialists, uh, uh, many of them have lost uh, friends, relatives, and certainly professional colleagues a few blocks away at the World Trade Center. Uh, but they all are obviously expressing through their presence and hard work today a commitment to getting uh, the markets open, uh, back trading, and uh, $13 trillion by far, the world's largest uh, marketplace, uh, back in action. And uh, let's go to Greg Clarkin over at the NASDAQ uh, market side. Greg, your thoughts uh, after this, uh, this difficult down day? Well, I don't know if you can hear the applause behind me, but on the floor here at the NASDAQ, that same delegation that rang the opening bell downtown at the uh, NYSC is right. here, and that is uh, Treasury Secretary Paul O'Neill. You have Richard Grosso from the NYSE, Wick Simmons right behind Mr. O'Neill there from the NASDAQ. A lot of relief, a lot of smiles on those faces uh, after what they would have to be considered by many measures a successful day of trading. They overcame a monumental task to get the markets open today, and they performed fairly well. No system problems, Lou. Uh, the technical aspect of things seemed to hold up very nicely today. It was never really swamped by volume. Uh, let's take a look, if we can, at some of the big technology stocks, give you a sense of how they fared Greg, on the day. Greg? Yes, Lou. Greg, before you before you do that, let's go back to that picture if I if I could ask just for a moment. Sure. Uh, let, let's go back to the picture of uh, the Treasury Secretary talking because I think it is worth noting uh, that there with Wick Simmons, the CEO of the Nasdaq, is uh, Richard Grasso, obviously Treasury Secretary Paul O'Neill talking. Uh, we've had a historic uh, display of of unity on Wall Street with uh, DeGrasso, the chairman of the New York Exchange, there at the Ma NASDAQ market site. The first time in history that the chairman of the New York Exchange has ever been present at the closing bell at the NASDAQ, as uh, this morning we had another first. That is, 
that the uh, CEO, Wick Simmons of the NASDAQ, was present at the opening bell of the big board, and that was a, an important symbolic display of unity on Wall Street and the commitment and cooperation uh, in purpose that these, uh, these financial leaders have been demonstrating for the past week under the most difficult of circumstances. Uh, Greg, I'm sorry, back to you. That's okay, Lou. Indeed it was. You know, I spoke to some of the NYSE delegation as they were filing in here a few minutes ago into a person. They said, you know, they've never been up here. So, you know, these fierce rivals really kind of putting aside the competitiveness and getting together to get the market up and running today. Here's just a sampling of the big caps. You can see they were all on the downside. The travel stocks, as expected, big losers today. We saw Northwest Airlines, SkyWest losing about 35% of their value. A lot of the smaller regional carriers reside on the NASDAQ. Mesa Air, one of them, they were down. And then also those online travel sites, Expedia, Priceline.com, all off very sharply today. On the upside, though, a lot of the companies, the technology companies related to security, Envision Technologies, these folks make the detection systems for airports to screen the baggage. That stock rising at one point was up 200% today. You can see the big pop on it at the close. Polycom, this is a company that's in the video conferencing field. The feeling is that with business travel being affected, video conferencing becomes more popular. They were among the big winners as well today. So uh, a handful of stocks posting nice gains, Lou, and overall the NASDAQ down triple digits, but still a lot of folks coming away fairly pleased with the performance, really, of the markets today. And as you pointed out, Greg, uh, today's decline in both percentage uh, terms and point terms, not even qualifying amongst the 10 worst uh, uh, declines on the NASDAQ uh, his, in uh, historical terms. Well, the Federal Reserve and central banks all around the world today taking uh, concerted, coordinated action to stabilize markets and to support currencies. Uh, Kathleen Hayes, our economics correspondent, has that part of the story. Kathleen? Thank you very much, Lou. And of course, an important part of the story it is today, and it wasn't just the Federal Reserve. This is a global effort to prop up the world's financial system to try to get the economy moving ahead again. The Federal Reserve cut its key short-term rate, the Fed funds rate, by 50 basis points. The European Central Bank also cut. The Bank of Canada cut. The Swiss National Bank cut. In the policy statement accompanying the Fed's action, which is closely vetted by people on Wall Street, the Fed said it will continue to supply unusually large volumes of liquidity to financial markets as needed until more normal market functioning is restored. It also said even before the tragic events of last week that employment, production, business spending remained weak and last week's events have the potential to damp spending further. The big question now, will the U.S. economy avoid recession? Well, guess what? A lot of people say we're already in recession and this just makes it worse, including former Fed Governor Wayne Angel, who said he expects the Fed to cut again on October 2nd by 25 basis points, maybe even a half percentage point. So in light of all this, why didn't the bond market do better? The bond market had a bit of a setback today after a big rally last Last week. Well, one big reason is they think that the Federal Reserve will succeed, along with massive stimulus from the federal government. The federal government is dusting off an old, powerful tool, fiscal stimulus, tax cuts, $40 billion in relief. DeLoss Smith in the conference board here earlier today, Lou, an old friend of yours as well. And DeLoss says, don't forget, that's a powerful thrust, a big power to the economy. He thinks it's going to work. Okay, Kathleen. Thank you very much, Kathleen Hayes. I want to turn now to uh, to get a, some perspective on the day's activities on Wall Street to Michael Holland. He's the chairman of the uh, Holland Company. Uh, Mike, good to have you with us. Good to be here. The, uh, what we have watched here today, getting these markets back in action in some ways, would you agree, is more important than the point loss uh, or gain on the day? The point loss or gain was insignificant no matter what happened. The huge story was that in a war zone that just occurred a few days ago, the New York Stock Exchange, the American Stock Exchange, the NASDAQ all function spectacularly without a hitch. I would say in a word, Lou, in today in New York, the bad guys lost, the good guys won. And we're going to uh, see the good guys asserting themselves increasingly in, the, in these markets uh, uh, and the economic imperatives around the world as well as military now right. it appears uh, and in other initiatives. But in terms of these markets over the next several days, right. uh, do you expect to see continued order? This was a down market, but orderly. Do you expect Today to see? Today was the day. That's it. If anyone wanted to disrupt this market, and I'll, I'll uh, Im imply you know, bad intentions to some people, others who are simply weak need. And I'm talking primarily outside the United States. If they wanted to do something, today was the day. They failed. The first two hours this morning were the day for disruption and instability. As you just have reported and your reporters have, have just told us, it was a spectacular success. The system was tested, it was tried, and came through with blazing uh, good, good marks. Okay. Michael Hall, thank you as always. Thank you.
Well, that is uh, the latest on what has been an incredibly emotional and uh, volatile but orderly day on Wall Street here in New York. I'm Lou Dimes reporting. Thank you. In business suits and rescue gear, New Yorkers open a new work week, a new beginning in the city's devastated financial district, clinging to flags and clinging to hope. I come here every day filled with optimism that I am, in fact, going to find my brother Tommy alive. In Washington, the commander-in-chief keeps laying the groundwork for America's new war against terrorism and issues a warning to prime suspect Osama bin Laden. There's an old poster out west, as I recall, that said, wanted, dead or alive. I'm Judy Woodruff in Washington, and I'm having a difficult time reading uh, our script right here. But I want to say that despite the ashes, despite the wreckage, uh, despite all the, the terrible things that have come as a result of what has happened, I'm sorry, I'm just going to need just a second here. Thank you. Please bear with me. We, we had some sirens here in Washington, and... Uh, We've had to scramble to get ourselves organized. We've been seeing more activity and determination today at the very places where those terrorists struck this country six days ago. Here in Washington, with the torn and charred Pentagon, planning for retaliatory strikes goes on. Earlier, President Bush was there for a briefing on the call-up of military reservists. And he used stronger language than ever to put suspected terrorist Osama bin Laden on notice. In New York, emergency crews are pressing on with their rescue and recovery mission at the ruins of the World Trade Center. Even as many workers in the financial district start heading home after their first day back on the job since Tuesday's terror. Joey? From CNN Center in Atlanta, I'm Joey Chen. Now we want to take a look at what else is happening in America's new war on terrorism. Afghanistan's supreme leader says that Islamic clerics will meet tomorrow to decide whether to hand over suspected terrorist Osama bin Laden. Pakistani officials have warned Afghanistan's Taliban rulers to produce bin Laden or to face U.S. attacks. Secretary of State Colin Powell says that the Bush administration is more convinced than ever that bin Laden is the prime suspect in last week's attacks on New York and Washington. It is becoming clear with each passing hour with each passing day that is the al-Qaeda network that uh, is the prime suspect as the president has said and all roads lead to uh, the leader of that organization Osama bin Laden and uh, his uh, location in Afghanistan also today, Attorney General John Ashcroft says numerous federal agents will be flying on commercial airlines to help guard against new acts of terrorism. Ashcroft says there is a continuing threat because associates of the hijackers who carried out Tuesday's attacks may still be in the country. At least four material witnesses now are in FBI custody in the ongoing investigation of the attacks against the United States. Judy. President Bush today visiting a Muslim mosque here in Washington. While he was there, he had some something to say, and let's listen to his words right now. I'd like to get folks standing with me. The American people um, were appalled and outraged. Um, at last Tuesday's attacks, and so were Muslims all across the world. Both Americans, our Muslim friends and citizens, taxpaying citizens, and uh, Muslims and nations uh, were just appalled and could not believe uh, what, what we saw on our TV screens. These acts of violence against innocents violate the fundamental tenets of the Islamic faith. And it's important for my fellow Americans to understand that. 
The English translation is not as eloquent as the original Arabic, but let me quote from the Quran itself. In the long run, evil in the extreme will be the end of those who do evil. For that they rejected the signs of Allah and held them up to ridicule. The face of terror is not the true faith of Islam. That's not what Islam is all about. 